I'm going to show in Revelation chapter 2 through uh, verses 25 through 27, guarding the little you have now affords a much larger reward later. Mm -hmm. Guarding the little that you have now affords a much re uh, much larger reward later. Mm -hmm. So in other words, to whom much, uh, to little has been given, I'm sorry, to much has been given, much is required. Right. And everything's relative in life when it comes to that. But in verse 25, it says, but hold fast and guard from loss or injury what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps by guarding from loss or injury my works until the end, to him I will give power and privilege of superhuman delegated influence over the nations that are pagan and non-Jewish. That's a pretty awesome reward to have. Mm -hmm. No politician on this earth even has that kind of authority. Can you imagine having that kind of authority? <laughs> but it says we're going to be kings and priests in the mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. You are qualifying for a position in the kingdom if you hold fast to the works that he give you to hold fast to. Yes. Verse 27. He shall rule as a tending shepherd of them with a rod of iron that is a baton of royalty. They shall be dashed into pieces like potter's vessels of earthen clay, as I also have received from my father. Any thoughts? It's just like you you said, but I, in this way, um, I think he says, he that is faithful over little will be faithful mm -hmm. over much. It's what do you appreciate what you have? How much do you, how thankful are you are for what he's given us? And he's given us a lot. He's laid his life down that we can have life. So do we, do we walk this walk in vain? Do we walk it to his shame? I mean, if you got this staff in your hand, if you're a shepherd over people, life, not, not just over a congregation, in your own home. In your own home. You right. know, mm -hmm. on your job if you're a leader. Are you leading righteously? Are you leading uh, professionally? Are you doing things the right way? Or are you taking these shortcuts? Because temptation comes from every area. You know, I'm still got Judah in my mind. He's going on a trip. But right away on the midst of his trip, like many of you read about today, all these businessmen go on these trips and they want to hire the harlot. You <laughs> understand what I'm saying? Right. It's like he want to hire a harlot on his way. Maybe this is where this concept come from that we still deal with today. Who knows? But I'm saying if you're walking a righteous walk, don't turn into her as King Solomon walked. Because her bed is full of dead man bones. Hmm. Don't get it. Don't get your scepter taken away from you. Yeah, and it's um, it's easy for that to happen when you're ignorant mm -hmm. of Satan's devices. Yes. Don't ever think you're smarter than him. Oh no. You know, don't ever think you're smarter than him. Um. You know, going back to Tamar a bit. So in scripture, women who wear a veil mm -hmm. are synonymous with being a harlot. Right. So it's interesting in the Shemitic world how Arab women wear the a veil. scar, a right. veil. Mm -hmm. Now, you can argue where did that come from, but the whole point is it's an ancient culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but in biblical times, that's what it means. But I kind of want to bring it forward just as kind of a little side note right now about the deception. And I was, you know, meditating on this and Yahweh kind of showed me a little picture about it. So today we have this face diaper that we're told we have to wear. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but to wonder in some kind of a way if that covering of your face is also a sign that you've been given over to harlotry, to a system that's trying to influence you to do the wrong things, to follow an ideology that is not right. So much so that I see people who oppress other people who don't do it. Because they're angry because they're not wearing this face covering, okay, with this whole pandemic that we got going on. 
And so there's a war between these two factions, between the ones that feel that they're righteous by wearing this diaper face mask, okay, and the ones that don't. And so I'm like, people just giving in so easy to that without questioning the science on it. And it's not, you know, it's not my point to be political. I'm just trying to bring out about the idea of how easy it is to be dragged into something that seems like it's for the right reason, but it's actually for the wrong reason. Okay. So like a lot of these diaper masks, you know, they're made with Teflon and PCBs, which are known to be cancer causing in the lungs. And you're inhaling those particles all day long. Just to mention that as a aside. So are you in the end, my point is when you give over to something so easy without questioning it, and you're being duped by uh, an organization or or a person, or it doesn't matter what it is in this life, to succumb to this oppressive authority on you to make you give in without questioning it. Have you not caused yourself a problem? in many different ways. And so that's kind of what I see with this thing with Tamar in a way, in a kind of different way, but a similar way, she was acting as a harlot to seduce Judah, to get involved in a situation without him realizing what he was actually being seduced into. And so this comes back to the craftiness mm -hmm of what the spirits are doing in the spiritual realm. They do it in the religious realm. They do it in the secular realm. They do it in the financial realm. They do it in the human relationship realm and the governmental realm, all these different realms. We're all being bombarded by deceptions all the time. And so I think we've now come to a place in history where you really better start sitting down and asking yourself some very important questions. When somebody's telling you, you have to do something, don't be so quick to grab onto it. Make sure you consult with Messiah first and see what he says about it. Mm -hmm. Because the decision you make could be the decision that destroys your life in the end. And I know people where that's happened to them because they made a rash decision, not questioning the source of what was seducing them to get involved in something they shouldn't have gotten involved in. And they lost their life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always say, um, when I'm talking to people, I say, just look how I see stuff through my eyes. You know, just to uh, reiterate a little bit on you from a different perspective through eyes. And I was, I was telling the person, I say, I don't really get involved into the decision-making processes people do, but I say, I will ask that person that goes to the doctor and have an arm or a leg cut off to live. When you making a statement, we got to die or something. Why would you cut your foot off? Why would you cut your leg off? To that ones who put the ports in them to get the chemotherapy. If you're gonna die from something, why put, why put that poison in you? Just go ahead and die. So when, when it comes to a question of- or Put your faith in Yahshua. Yeah, if you're going to believe in you. him to heal you, then that's what you do. But if you're going to say, oh, he can heal me through this process or through that process, and that's your faith, that's your faith. But um, when you're looking through other people's fears and the decisions they make in those fears to run to a doctor for anything, for them to put you on any kind of pill that's not going to heal you, that's, that's saying to that person, that's what he's hoping for his life. But um, for life eternal, it's a different kind of faith we have to mm -hmm. possess. Um, it's not the faith to stay here. We just strangers in this land. Right. We passing through. It's nothing going to keep us here but the word of Yahweh. And so if we're going to be against this stuff and we're going to talk about it, then we need to get rid of doctors and hospitals and medicines. If we're looking through somebody else's eyes, because I know people that will not go to a doctor. I know people 
that won't get blood transfusions or give anybody blood. I actually know that, but can I call it demonic or not? I, I'm not. That's their faith. It's a, it's on their judgment and their call. But I'm always trying to look through other sets of eyes um, because Judah wasn't looking through Tamara's eyes of how she felt betrayed. He was only seeing he had the power to do this and not to do that. That's not what we should be doing as believers. We should right. not take our power as an opportunity to take advantage over people. And mm -hmm. that's I think that's the bottom line teachings of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful how you remove the moat out of somebody else's eye when you got a beam in your own eye. We really have to be careful because it can turn around and, and question you about something you may not be doing the exact same thing, but you might be doing something that they don't uh, particularly believe in or do. You know, that might be right along the same right? Is that possible? You know, and so I I, I tend to try to, I, I stay on the examination table. I'll put it like that. And like I was telling you, um, these discussions, they really are scary to me because the things that are happening here, they're happening to people that have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this society today, we're so quick to judge outside, but nobody's inside the house mm -hmm. judging, uh, making uh, corrections inside the house, but we'll go outside the house. Uh, I read some of the most divorced uh, people in the world are those that are in the face. Yes. Where did this come from when we're so against it? And there are leaders, there are bishops and rabbis and everything that have divorced and remarried. I'm talking about saying they got mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge to do so. And this is what I want people to be aware of because this stuff scared me once I came in to see the attitude of people that, man, the stuff that scared you to run away from, it's, you running right into it, and they telling you it's okay. Well, what was the purpose of me coming over here if I was all right doing it over there? Mm -hmm. That's 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 it on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, point well taken. Uh, and by the way, we're not giving medical right, advice. Right, right, right. We're not doctors. We're not giving medical right. advice. Spiritual advice. That's it. That's it. Uh, it. We only say these things so that people can ponder mm -hmm. that it's not always as cut and dry. Yeah is you would like to make it. And then by no means am I trying to condemn somebody mm -hmm. if they decide to do, right. you know, face covering or whatever. All I'm just simply saying is things may be a little more deeper mm -hmm. than perhaps you've given it credit for. Because exactly. after all this is, are you ignorant of Satan's devices? Mm -hmm. Do you really know what's behind what got you to make the decision that you made? to go along with whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yes. That's the point. Yes. Okay, so uh, in point two, 